How's it going you guys? Welcome back to another video. Hudson here and in today's video we're going to talk about a topic that's super important to me and that's RXing workouts and why I believe you should do it less often. So if you don't already follow me on Instagram, make sure you do it at Constantly Varied Fitness because I asked uh, you know, on my Instagram story what are some questions you guys have for me and one of them was how do I start RXing workouts? Like as if all of a sudden I can give them one or two tips and then boom, they're RXing all the workouts in their gym. So. This was a super uh, frustrating question for me because I feel like that's, you know, a lot of people just want, at first they want those immediate gains, those immediate results, and just, you know, be able to uh, have, have muscle up tomorrow, have a new clean PR every single week, where it's a process in order for you to get better at certain movements. So real quick, I want to give you guys a back, or my background on CrossFit and how I got started in my process through my past six plus years of doing CrossFit. So I started CrossFit right out of high school at 19. I absolutely loved it. I was going every single day and I didn't find out about it from the CrossFit Games, which I feel like there's a lot of people uh, back in the day when CrossFit Games was like really blowing up, like 2016, 2017, that was like the main way people were hearing it, it feels like. And then people were seeing Rich Froning, Clean and Jerk 315 and they're like, whoa, that's so badass. I want to do that and I want to lift heavy all the time because the lifting heavy is going to help me get to that. So there was that misconception. There's a lot of people coming to the gym just trying to crush their souls every day to try to see results that way. Um, but I didn't start that way. I just heard from you know a family friend talking about it, and I was like, that sounds kind of cool. I looked up gyms near me. I started and I fell in love with it. So it was more just like uh, I was an enthusiast and just wanted to get in a good workout with all these different fun movements, doing Olympic lifts, doing gymnastics, versus just going to a regular global gym and using a machine. From there, about a year doing that, I started coaching within a year, and I was, again, just head over heels with CrossFit, and I was going seven days a week. I would do the Monday through Saturday class, and then go on Sunday to do open gym, and I was literally, I was infatuated about it, and that's when I met my buddy Roderick, where he introduced me to competition programmings and signing up for comps, so that, that's been like the past four or five years of my life, but I slowed down these last six months or so. Ever since they got rid of regionals, my competitive drive hasn't been as high. Um, but it's still, you know, I like to do competitive programming. I still like to compete in the gym. I'm still signed up for the open and that kind of stuff. But it started as I just love CrossFit as a workout program. I got really competitive and now it's just I'm a, I guess you could say like a casual competitive type person when it comes to CrossFit. Uh, and, but and my goals as of right now is I want to live a long, healthy life and be able to do CrossFit for as long as possible. So going back to the main topic, people think that in order to get a great workout, they have to RX the workout, even though nine times out of 10, they have no clue what the purpose of the workout is. So this could be, you know, multiple reasons why this is happening. So the main reason this might be happening is that your coach isn't actually relaying what the workout is meant to do. So let's say for example, I put a workout on the board and it's three rounds, 10 power cleans, 10 box jumps, 10 pull-ups. Sounds pretty simple on paper, but let's say I make the power clean weight like 225 for guys, 155 for ladies, the box jump height is uh, 30 for guys, 24 for ladies, and pull-ups have to be done unbroken. That's a totally different workout versus if I made the bar 95, 65, you know, typical box height, and you could just break up the pull-ups however you want. So when people see workouts written a certain way, they think that I have to do the workout as written in order to maximize my results, whereas, if you look at a workout like that and see 225 power cleans, a lot of people can't power clean 225 or that might be close to their power clean max. Now, let's say I tell my athletes, hey guys, I want you to pick a weight around 70% of your max power clean, so it should be a heavy weight. You probably break it up in a sense of like two or three or really, really fast singles, but it's not a weight you're getting stuck at. That's a totally different workout versus saying, hey guys, I want you to do this workout around 90% of your max power clean and then it should be grueling heavy power sink, uh, power cleans so that way you know you can go slow there but then maybe push the uh, box jumps and the pull-ups there's so many different ways a single workout can be slightly tweaked to be performed differently to get something else out of it maybe your coach wants you to do a moderate weight which is why they give you that 70 percent uh, recommendation maybe they want you to do a heavy weight that's why it's 90 percent maybe it's 95 65 so it should be able to be unbroken reps and everyone should be able to just go 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 and get it done as quick as you can so that's the first thing is understanding what's the point of the workout will help you better assess if you should our exit. So many people when they first, they get their first power clean at 225 or whatever it may be and they see a slightly louder weight in that in the workout, they go and say, oh, I can RX this workout. I'll probably get hit by a time cap like halfway through or I might just barely squeeze by. But what ends up happening is now you are just, 
when the stimulant is meant to be, let's say again, that 70%, it's meant to be a lot faster. 70% for a lot of us when we're breathing hard isn't too bad. We can still keep moving through it. And 70% is not that heavy to where we can still have good form. Where naturally, the more intense the workout is, whether it be uh, in the speed of the workout, whether it be the weight of the workout, the volume of the workout, it definitely changes how you perform it and how your body can move throughout that workout. So if I'm struggling to finish an RX workout, but that wasn't the idea of it, not only now am I not getting the same stimulant, the same approach to the workout and moving at the same intensity as everyone else, I'm at a higher risk of injury, which is obviously something we all want to avoid and stay away from. Now, there's different ways you can assess when you're ready for RX. So one thing that I thought of that really you know clicked in my mind when I first started RXing workouts, and I feel like a lot of athletes I try to relay, relay, the, relay this to them the best I can, is the fact that, okay, when you look at a workout and it doesn't scare you, or you don't think that I probably wouldn't be able to finish this workout. The time cap in my eyes and how I program, and I feel like how a lot of gyms program, is not meant to be hit. Sometimes I'll write a workouts where I'm like, yep, no one's gonna finish this workout. Maybe a very small select few that are really proficient at the movements or are really strong or gymnasty, whatever it is. But I'll program workouts very, very rarely where the time cap is meant to be hit. I just wanna see you get as far as you can in the workout. The time cap is you need to be done by this workout at least at this time, or at the very longest at this time. So if it's that three round workout I mentioned before, it's a 16 minute time cap, you don't wanna be finishing at 15.49. You wanna be finishing a few minutes before that. Again, that's just how I program, but in my eyes and how most gyms program, the time cap is not meant to be hit. The time cap is the slowest possible or the longest amount of time you could possibly take to try to finish this workout. So if you think you're gonna get time capped, or you think that this weight is really, really heavy and you think you might risk a chance of failing reps, then that's a reason not to RX. Never let yourself fail reps in a workout. I let people fail reps twice. So you can have one attempt at failing a rep or one attempt and you end up failing it. I might, I'll, if I see it, I'll give you some cues what I think will help correct that and help you hit the next lift. But if you miss the second one, I have my athletes change out the weight because, well A, you're wasting energy and you're not getting anything done in the workout, you're getting stuck at the same movement versus going through the workout how it's intended. B, you're now practicing bad techniques, so now you're practicing missing reps and not completing the rep, which is just gonna instill bad habits and you know get you more timid when it comes to approaching that weight again later on, where we wanna build the strength to where when you go to hit you know a new PR attempt, you're confident because you've been crushing the 80, 90, 95% below that weight. And then C, you run the chance of risking injury because a missed lift, whether it be uh, you know a clean, whether it be um, I'm trying to think of other lifts you might miss, like a wall ball shot, maybe possibly if, like if wall balls are really tiring for you, missing a rep just has zero benefits from it. There's no need to miss reps. It's not a karate kid where you try again, try again, wax on, wax off. It's supposed to be practicing good habits, making sure you get the workout done in a prompt time because it is constantly very high intensity functional movement. So. I made, I don't think I made a video about this. I'll probably make a video about this soon as well, but people get the word high intensity confused with maximum intensity. I got that from Ben Bergeron's podcast, um, which really hit home to me because I feel like a lot of people also get that confused and think they have to go 100% in the workout to get a good workout. But that's not the case either. But anyways, if you think that you're gonna hit by the time cap or you think that the, uh, the weight is gonna be too heavy and you might risk a chance of failing reps, scale down. Also, Let's say you are someone that's been doing CrossFit for like five or six years. You feel like you're pretty proficient at movements. You feel like you're pretty strong. You feel like you have a good grasp on how to approach the workouts. But maybe some days you come in and you're just not feeling it. Maybe you come in like, yeah, my back's just really sore from this week and my, my quads are bugging and my shoulders are iffy. And you see squat snatches in the workout. Those probably aren't going to feel that great. And if you try to RX, you then go back to the original problem we have. You, the weight might be too heavy that day possibly, even though it's more a routine lit weight. Uh, other days, you might risk the chance of an injury or you know, you might risk the chance of getting time cap. So it's based off the day, some days I come in, I don't feel so hot, I modify movements, I modify weights, I make it so I can still get in a good workout, but not crush myself and just you know, not enjoy the workout as much as I possibly could. Another big thing is, what are your goals in the gym? Unless if you want to be competitive, do local comps, do sanction events, you really want to maximize your limits and you have 
uh, you know, a lot of time spent at the gym, you don't have much responsibility, so like you're some college kid or you're someone in their mid-20s that has some free time that doesn't have a family yet, doesn't have any kids, doesn't have a lot of responsibilities, a business run or anything like that, then you have more time to spend a few extra hours in the gym to work on technique, get stronger, and then that will allow you to RX more workouts, obviously. Whereas if you're someone that is a weekend warrior, you go and you do the hour-long class and you, sometimes you stretch afterwards, sometimes, you know, you half-ass the workouts because you're thinking about all the other stresses you have at work. It, it happens. I mean, I, I get it. But if your goal, what is your goal to be the first on the leaderboard every single day? If that is the case, why? Why do you want to do that? Truly assess what makes you go to the gym, why do you like to go to the gym, and why do you do CrossFit? Is it, do you want to lose weight? Do you want to gain muscle? Do you want to keep working out and your health fun and not just go through the same routine movements every single day? If that's the case, stay far away from RX. Keep the weights light, get a good sweat on, focus on technique to keep yourself injury free and not let yourself start to slip up and then have these nagging pains and injuries, and then most importantly, stretch. Another thing that I thought of a minute ago was the fact that the more weight you lift, the more gymnastics you do, the more volume you do, if you're doing extra workouts, maybe you do the class workout and you do something else on the side or you do a class workout, maybe your gym also has a barbell or a gymnastics or some other type of specialty class that you do and you're trying to pile more on, that now takes more time out of your day that you have to spend rehabbing your body essentially or recovering from those workouts to get ready for the next day. So if you're crushing yourself for hours a day, now you need to focus on more mobility work. Now you probably need to fit in a massage in there every, every other week or so. Now maybe you need to see a Cairo because you have you know, tight joints or something bugging and tweaking. There's more work that needs to get done the more you put into it. And we all know that if you want to get good at something, it's put more and more time into it. But it's very easy, or not not easy, um, but it's you know totally different to where, let's say you want to um, you know get a degree. You're going back to school and you want to get you know your bachelor's or your master's, whatever it is. The more time you spend reading, the better off you're going to get at that. Whereas the more time you spend working out, now it's pretty much breaking down your body and spend more time. This it's literally you're burning the candle at both ends, and now you have not only are you working out more, you have to spend more time making sure you're able to keep working out more. So that's another big part of it as well that I feel like a lot of people don't get, and they just take their bodies willy nilly, and then all of a sudden. I absolutely hate hearing this, but when someone says, oh, you know, once you get to my age, or what, you know, oh, I turned 40 the other day, I already feel my back tightening up. Getting older doesn't equal getting injured or having, or, you know, be having pain be normal. There are plenty of 70 and 80 year olds that go run Boston Marathon, or the Boston Marathon, or any other marathon. They, you know, go on crazy, um, mountain adventures and climb these Mount Everest and all these different ones. Like there's so many people that don't let their age be an excuse and they take care of themselves and they focus on the other little things that help them work out that keep that stay healthy and then they can do the thing they love for that much longer. Working out is an hour of your day. Are you getting eight to 10 hours of sleep? Something I'm working on, I'm struggling with that. Sleep's really hard, especially when you have these two little crazy dogs that wanna jump on your bed every morning. Um, but, you know, are you, again, getting massages? Are you stretching every night before you go to bed or after your workouts, possibly? Are you eating the right foods and making sure you're staying healthy? So many people come to my gym and they crush Monday through Friday. They kill the workouts, they do a great job, they eat pretty healthy, and then they come in on Monday and they're like, whoa, man, I spent all weekend drinking, especially where I live in San Diego there is a bar or a brewery on every other street like a Starbucks. So that's the big thing everyone likes to do. So going and drinking seven drinks on Saturday and then having a couple of mimosas on Sunday or then having beers while you're watching football on Sunday, that's not going to help you keep working out and keep getting better. I have people in my gym that wish they were better than they are now, but then I see them on Instagram partying up all the time. That's on you. So. I really wanted to get this video out to you guys because I feel like this is a really important topic to me. I highly suggest, unless you're someone that wants to be super competitive and wants to really push their limits, you don't have to RX every workout. And with that being said, just because you started CrossFit last year and you think now that, okay, I'm getting a little bit stronger, I should start RXing more workouts, don't worry about RX. RX is some random you know, marker that your coach made or whoever made the programming for that day B, some days might meant to be heavy, maybe too heavy for your lifts, some days are meant to be really light, where everyone can RX. Some days are meant to be 20 muscle-ups in a workout, some days are just regular pull-ups. Assess 
what you can do. Are you gonna get what the workout's intended for you to do? Are you gonna go at the same pace as everyone else? Or are you gonna get stuck behind and take 10 minutes behind the other, the second slowest person in the gym and everyone's gonna be sitting there watching you like, dang, why did this person scale? We're sitting here cheering them on, but they're standing there staring at the bar the whole entire time doing nothing. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. I really wanna keep the discussion going in the comments, so let me know what you guys think about uh, you know, people that RX the workouts that probably shouldn't, your experience with this. Do you RX every workout? Do you RX none of the workouts? Because you don't care about RX and you just wanna move and again be sweaty and you know, stay healthy and functional. Um, I really want to know your guys' opinion on this. I'm very excited to hear it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button. Please share this video with anyone you think it might be helpful for. Subscribe for plenty more videos. Expect three videos a week starting January 1st. We're going back on the YouTube grind. There was a period where I was posting like every single day for a while. That's going to slowly start coming back into effect. I'm going to start making these quick videos for you guys because um, I really enjoy giving you guys content and hearing you guys' opinions. Um, if you don't already, follow us on Instagram, Constantly Fitness. Well, next time I uh, leave it, ask me a question. Make sure you leave me a question. I'm gladly help you guys out. And the reason this video started was because, again, I asked, a I asked you guys, asked me questions on my Instagram, and this was one that really hit home to me and my gym and my programming. And I wanted to share with you guys and make sure you know I can help out as many of you as I can and help eliminate as much frustration as possible when it comes to those workouts. So follow me on there. I'm gonna do a, ask me a question probably like once a week. Um, and then if any of them are, you know, that need a longer explanation than what I can just type up, I'll do a video for it. So thanks again for watching you guys. We'll see you guys soon.